All right, guys, today we're going to be talking about some bushcrafting, some survival knives, and overall wilderness blades that I have bought throughout the years and gotten just had in the collection throughout the years that I have not regretted purchasing. These are knives that all of them purchased. None of these are given to me for free, unfortunately, as much as I love it. <laughs> uh, these are all knives I've bought, but I don't regret buying because they are such fantastic knives. And while I will say that if a knife isn't necessarily on this list, doesn't mean it's a bad knife, um, there definitely are some knives that I do regret buying and per se usually I don't necessarily fully regret buying knives because at the core I am a knife content creator and a content or and a knife collector so you know I like having things in my collection and I like being able to have what I call like reference points but if I had to pick like a knife that I regretted the most purchasing um, it is definitely this Winkler Blue Ridge Hunter these things are just so expensive I really don't love the materials I'm not a personal fan of the craftsmanship craftsmanship of these knives not to say that they're like poorly made I just don't really like the ergonomics and I just don't really love these Winkler knives as a whole, but I really wanted to get a Winkler so that I could have a knife for a reference point to be like, hey, this is a Winkler. This is why I don't love it, but this is it as a whole. And so to be fair, it's probably the knife I regret the most, but let's jump into some knives that I absolutely don't regret buying. So there are quite a few survival knives that I have, but we're gonna start off with the first one is the Cold Steel SRK. Now this is a newer Cold Steel SRK to me. This is the CPM 3V version, but I've had the SRKC, I've had the SK5 version of the SRK, and basically every SRK I've owned has yet to let me down, has yet to break, yet to disappoint me specifically me specifically. So there are some people that are like, oh, you know, I had one and it broke within the first 15 seconds of use. I think that's personally a lie, but I personally, with all the SRKs I've owned and used, I've never had one go awry on me. And the fact that they have seen so much dirt time with so many different people across the board, and they're still highly recommended, means that they have something going for them. All right, let's talk about some other knives. So a lot of these are what I would consider pretty budget knives. And the next one up is no exception. The Condor Pterosaur is another one that is sincerely one of my favorite budget knives. And it is because regardless to what you think of like three quarter tangs, I personally tend to like them. It is impossible to not love the Pterosaur. It is full tang as you can see, but it is fully encased in a plastic handle, very similar to the Mora Garberg. And I do also feel like the Garberg could be on this list. There's just so many good options once again if a knife doesn't make it on this list it doesn't mean that it's a bad knife it just means that there's a lot of knives to choose from but the Condor Pterosaur is still a bit cheaper than the Garberg. I think about $28-ish, maybe just $20 cheaper. Still a $40 knife for this bad boy. And so it's just a hard knife to not love. It does everything pretty well. And of course, there seemingly is always comments out there saying, I've broken that knife. I think I've broken that knife is like the equivalent to when someone has eaten something or some kind of meat and they're like, it tastes like chicken. Um, I feel like that's like the colloquial answer if you really don't know what it actually tastes like. Like what people will say about alligator, like, oh, it tastes like chicken or, oh, you know, they haven't eaten frog. So they'll be like, oh, frog tastes like chicken or something along those lines. You know, like everyone's always like, oh, I've broken that knife. And to be fair, you know, if you try to cut through a piece of rebar with any of these knives, there's a reasonable chance you could break them. But anyways, getting back to it, the Mora Clipper. This one has to be one of my favorites that I don't regret buying. This is actually one of my first bushcrafting knives and I got it for a whopping $8. That's partly why it's one of my first bushcrafting knives. Didn't have a lot of money when I first started bushcrafting. Of course, I was pretty much a, a child or a kid, so I didn't really have a ton of extra money. So the Mora Clipper was an $8 no-brainer, but it's still honestly a really awesome knife. And I'm gonna be talking a lot more about the Clipper this year because Mora has recently brought these knives back. So I'm really excited to see that. And while they are not $8, they are around, depending where you look, anywhere from from 11 to $15, so still incredibly budget oriented. 
Now, stepping it up a little bit in price point is going to be the Topps Fieldcraft. This is another one that as I gained more experience in bushcrafting and just wanted a overall larger, more usable blade than the Clipper had to offer, I went to the Fieldcraft. And this is one that admittedly, I don't carry as much in the field, partly because I have so many other knives to choose from, but uh, this one has served a lot of time, as you guys can clearly see by this completely unused blade, as everyone likes to say around here. Um, but this is just a fantastic knife. It's well-rounded. It is made out of 1095, but it is differentially heat-treated 1095, so it's really, really freaking tough. And uh, yeah, this knife can just take absolute punishment and is an overall very well-rounded blade. All right, next one up, and ironically, the one that I really shifted to after the Topps Fieldcraft is the BRK Bushcrafter. The Bushcrafter is one of those knives that is just, for me, a Goldilocks knife. Some people won't feel that way, but for me, once again, this is my list of knives that I haven't regretted purchasing, and the Bushcrafter is just one of those. It's a Goldilocks knife to me. It just isn't too big. It isn't too small. It isn't too thin. It's not too thick. It's just really the perfect knife for me. So... It has to be on the list, of course. Next one up is going to be the Bark River Knives Bravo One. Now, this is one that I was a bit apprehensive about, and I'd handled a few before purchasing this one, but this one is ultimately one that, like I said, I was apprehensive about buying, but I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get it, and I did, I did buy it, and honestly, it really has grown on me. The things that I like the most about the Bravo One, it has a very similar blade length to the Barky Bushcrafter. It is just a bit thicker, coming in at closer to a quarter inch thick, as opposed to the 5 30 seconds of the Bushcrafter, but it is a very handleable knife, and it has a very, very high convex grind, so this guy has an incredible slicing edge and it does bite like crazy so it is still a really good knife and works very well all right last one up rounding it off with the final knife being a survival knife this is the Ontario absolutely massive Ontario RTAC 2 and this knife is one that isn't necessarily super attainable but I really in hindsight do not regret getting it because while I do not always run out and use, you know, I'm not like sitting there waiting until I can use my RTAC 2 again. Um, the RTAC 2 is just a really fun survival knife because it's big. It's not terribly thick. It is full flat ground. So it's going to offer you a fairly good slicey edge. This one also has a reasonably high, you know, um, bevel to it. So it's going to, once again, be a reasonably slicey knife, but it's still very big and you can do a lot of chopping with it. Now, things I've done to mine, I ground off the finish off the spine and sharpen the spine so that you can strike ferro rods with it. Um, hopefully you guys can hear that. But I've you know sharpened the spine especially more so right around here and of course I blued that edge and then I also did some and they kind of they kind of look a little janky in hindsight but I did some lightning cuts here and on both sides of the handle I tried to do my best with them <laughs> they're not the cleanest but they do effectively work just fine so those lightning cuts just give that um, canvas micarta a little bit of extra traction and so once again um, the canvas micarta is already fairly grippy but it's nice to have those lightning cuts because they just help dig into your hands just that little bit more or give your hand that little bit of extra grip when chopping because of course this is going to be more of a chopping styled knife so even if you're just hacking through light brush it is nice to have that extra grip so that is the like i said ontario knife company um, or okc rtac 2 now of course okc is no longer in um business they have been actually purchased by rowan which for those who don't know who rowan is that is the people behind the heat treating of sc knives so now okc is going to be working very closely with sc and rowan um, under new production new management and like a new entire company essentially it's like this, the same brand name but an entirely new company with new machinery and so yeah it will be interesting to see what rowan does with the rtac 2 and of course all of the other Ontario knives that we've come to know and love. But anyways, that's beside the point. These are the handful of knives, both bushcrafting and survival, that I have had over the over the course of my years that I really love. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.